I, I think it is really, really challenging in the current context um, because medicine has become so rapid fire. I actually think of, uh, I hope this isn't too challenging of an analogy, but um, I actually think of factory farming. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of increase in technology that has enabled factory farms, right? But just because we can, and just because it does have a benefit in according to one parameter, right, output, right, or certain kinds of meats or whatever it might be, doesn't mean that we should, because there's a profound uh, um, ripping of dignity of the, the, the sacred things, in my opinion, the things that are connected to God because they were made by God. Um, so uh, just because science affords you the opportunity to do something doesn't mean that it actually is healing in the, in the sort of holistic sense, right? So while medicine is really, really powerful, the way that we are applying medicine is often so disconnected. I would say that we ought to start by putting connection back into the practice of medicine. I have a lot of medical conditions. Many of them are unexplained. It's rather mysterious. I really don't know why. And I'm, I'm sort of curious to see whether I'll find out on this side of heaven. But um, it's, it's uh, really troubling and frustrating as someone who has a stable job and a good income and you know, good health insurance that it still, when I have chronic and debilitating medical conditions, takes months for me to see a doctor and I might get two minutes with him, right? Um, when, it feels, when it's as serious as I might need immediate surgery or whatnot, right? So I don't know exactly what the solution is, but the, there's clearly a problem where we are not connecting. We're not connecting. So I, I don't expect my doctor to know that I'm a Christian or to try to talk, with, but at minimum, I'd like to be a human. Right? I, would, I, would not, I, I don't want to just be cattle going through or you know, you know, uh, just uh, harvesting the corn. Uh, not that those don't have their own sacred places, but I would like to interact and connect as a human. I, I think that should be the starting point, um, even though, yes, your expertise is the way you know how to treat my bodily injury, perhaps diagnose it, give me the correct prognosis, etc. But I'm also, I have anxiety, I'm, I'm troubled by this, I haven't been able to see you. There are all kinds of other things that are related that are going, down and going on and I'd love to be able to connect with my physician about that. But I don't get a holistic experience with him, I barely even get two minutes with him. So I think that would be the starting point. And, and I don't know that we could start that late either. I think in the training of medical professionals, we need to start talking about these kinds of issues. It can't be that they go through medical training and everything's about anatomy and everything's about physiology and surgery, and then they become practicing, you know, practitioners of medicine, and it's too challenging at that point to start to put the human element in if they haven't been trained to think about it throughout the process. But she, Lori's an actual doctor, so you should listen to her. Yeah, Lori, so I've come to you as a patient. Yeah. I'm not native. I'm not Navajo. Right. right. Tell me what yeah. it means for me. Sure. So um, I, you, you spoke of, of people coming from various traditions and backgrounds and religions, but uh, I think Praveen was, hit it right on the nail when he said uh, he's a person, he's a human, and he wants that interaction as a human. And I think it's valuing that person and that human and that human's body that's at the very core of that. And um, so as you were talking, some things came to mind for me for some, a couple of patients recently. And so, you know, it's, it's not like we actually even have the time to be able to do that for every single patient that we see. Um, but some patients need that a whole lot more than others. Um, for my patient who's getting a routine colonoscopy, it, it's probably fine if I just know that he knows what he needs to do and I know what I need to do and we go do it, right? He does his bowel prep and I do the colonoscopy. But for example, I just had a, he, he's a little white child, 14 year old, who had a ruptured appendix and we did a laparoscopic appendectomy and um, Postoperatively, he had what's called an ileus. It's where the bowel doesn't work very quickly, and um, he 
he was very worried and anxious, and uh, we waited until he started passing gas and having bowel movements, and we started to feed him, and all was going well, and then it wasn't. And then he was sick, and he was throwing up and vomiting, and we got a CT scan, and he had a bowel obstruction or an ileus, or, and we had to go all the way back to the beginning along with the nasogastric tube and, and go again. And the next time we tried, he did better, and he went home. But then he started to have some symptoms again. So for him, his mom and I were talking on a regular basis almost every day, and that's where the level of care went up, and that's where the attention went up, and that's where the communications went up. Um, I have another guy who had um, uh, basically had had a, uh, a hernia procedure and had an infection afterward, and we had to open the wound and start dressing changes and stuff. And once again, they're scared, they're afraid, they're worried. The communication goes way up. His, his wife has my cell phone number. And then he had to move to California in the middle of all of it. So we had to find people to take care of him down there and, and move through. But it's what patients want is they want you there. They want you with them, walking with them, helping them, and caring for them at the level that they need it. And I think that we can do a lot better as practitioners in that way. And that can be inclusive of their beliefs and spirituality.